There ain't no place like home. Hello everyone, my name is Danny. This review is for the movie called Wild Rose. Jesse Buckley delivers an unforgettable star-making performance as Rose Lynn Harlan, a rebellious country singer who dreams of trading the working-class streets of Glasgow for the Grand Ole Opry of Nashville. Fresh out of prison, Rose Lynn juggles her menial, menial job, two children, and committed mother, expertly portrayed by Oscar nominee Julie Walters, as she pursues her bold ambition of a one-way ticket to the musical stardom. With the support of her boss, Rosalind embarks on a life-changing journey that challenges her sense of self and helps her discover her true voice. Complete with an electrifying soundtrack performed by Buckley, Wild Rose is a joyous human story steeped in music, courage, family, and achieving your dreams. No matter how far away they may appear, after all, all you need are three chords and the truth. <clears throat> this is a 2019 film. It is rated R. It runs a little, uh, about an hour and a half. And it stars Sophie Okonero, James Sives, Craig Parkinson, James Harkness, Janie Godley, Daisy Littlefield, Adam Mitchell, Ryan Kerr, and Nicole Kerr. This is Wild Rose. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize for the first 10 seconds, but it's a nice little song in here, and I'm not much of a country singer, even though I'm a good singer. And uh, there's a lot of country songs I could be singing in here, but I'll just kind of forget that after the first 10 seconds. So uh, Wild Rose, uh, for anybody who doesn't know at this point, is a movie about a country singer in Glasgow, uh, Scotland, right? And uh, <clears throat> it's near London and the BBC area. So she kind of first has that dream of, you know, making it over there in her home area. And then as she gets out of jail, she wants to dream bigger. You know, I mean, like she hasn't seen her kids while she's in jail. So she's not really thinking of them. She's just thinking about making it. So her dream turns into going to Nashville and making it as a singer. So that's what the movie focuses on. And that's what we get for a storyline for the first hour. And um, then it kind of changes, but I won't give that away or tell you why it changes or anything. Um, <clears throat> it's a pretty straightforward movie. I kind of saw a lot of stuff coming. I kind of got a little bored with some of the elements. Got tired of some of the conversations. Got tired of some of the arguments. Um, <clears throat> number one concern is that it is hard to understand these people and their dialects. And uh, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough to understand most of the people in this movie. It comes up a couple times, you know, oh, I didn't understand what you just said. Uh, there's a lot of, do you have a wee moment? Do you have a wee minute? All this wee lad. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you kind of hear. You're not sure if it's correct. And it kind of struggles for the movie. You know, watching it, trying to understand what people are saying. Um, it's, I I'm sorry for it because it's a nice movie. But when you have this, you know, idea and then you put it in a foreign country, people are going to struggle to understand what the people are saying. Number two big concern for me is the R rating. Um, the reason why it's rated R is because a couple of select characters like to say the F word over and over again. That's it. That's why it's rated R. Um, there's one scene at the very beginning, but you know PG-13 movies have that all the time. I think why it's rated R is because of the... 20 times we get to hear the F word. I think that's about it. And it's kind of sad. Because you cut out those 20 F words. You have a nice PG-13 movie. You, you uh, create a larger audience. And you know then you get to know that it's mostly just the music and the storyline about this family. 
So that could make for a much more enjoyable movie for a lot more people. And uh, I just don't understand why you would put those you know, 20 or so cuss words in your movie to get the R rating when you could just cut them out and have the PG-13 more of a family-friendly movie. But that's, you know, hindsight to the rescue. Um, in general, uh, the music of this movie is constant. It's uh, very and much in the background when people are talking. It's in the... You know, it's it's playing when we're traveling somewhere and going somewhere or she's going to her job or she's going over to her other job or uh, she's going to the bar. or I mean, there's music playing all the time. And then she gets to perform music. So I will say I enjoyed most of the music most of the time. Um, I didn't connect with it completely because I'm not a huge country fan. But I, you know, am admiring this movie for what it is. And what it is, is that it's trying to have this character who doesn't really fit in anywhere particularly uh, try to stand out and try to become famous, try and make a living of, uh, you know, a life out of music and stuff. There's a lot to it. All admirable stuff. So that's what I'd like to focus on after watching this movie is how neat the music was even though maybe I didn't connect with all of it it was very beautiful a couple times it takes the characters and it puts them in the shock because of how beautiful it is so it really helps the audience watching the movie you know cherish the song also uh, the last one and the one she sings at her work for a couple people are the two kind of most obviously great things the other ones that she sings I think are like covers and I don't really know who sings them or why she's singing them, why it means anything to her. And so that doesn't help all that much. But there is a time in this movie <clears throat> where she gets to sing on stage a couple different times. Uh, the last one that she gets to sing on stage, uh, that's really awesome. You know, um, that's like the culmination of the movie. The second to last time... That's really neat because it's a spur of the moment kind of thing. You know, we didn't expect it. It just happens. It's really pretty. That's good. Um, there's a couple of things in this movie that don't make quite much sense. And the second to last time she's on stage, what happens after that is what doesn't make sense. I feel like this movie, you know, it says it's only in about an hour and a half. I think it could have been longer. I think it could have drawn out a couple of these things. I think it could have added some more things to make it a little bit more uh, common sense, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more twisty. And that scene of her second to last time on stage in this movie, what happens after that where um, like she gets this offer and she says no and that's it. Like I felt like that scene could have at least expanded, at least she could have tried, you know, to accept this offer and see what came of it, but she just says no, and that's the end of the scene, and it's really awkward, and it's really weird that they cut it short, and, uh, you know, there's a couple other people that have things happen, and they could have explained how that happened or whatever, but really, they were just trying to make this movie kind of short, and I kind of felt like it was a little rushed, like I could have watched it longer, I was enjoying the thing, you know, so that's the only other kind of flaw. Um, I think everybody in this movie was generally good. The kids are truly, you know, kind of upset with their mom for being in jail. And I think that helps the movie a lot. And uh, the mother, you know, she's up and down. I know it says she's, what, Academy Award winning or something? Uh, or nominated. That she's this great actress because she's an older lady. But, uh... She has this time where she's like really mad at her daughter and then she's really helpful and caring and, you know, thinking about her daughter. And that goes up and down like two or three times throughout the movie. I can deal with, you know, uh, I, have the, I have this movie about Eddie the Eagle. Uh, his parents are the same way in that movie where they, you know, they're really against it and then they really are for him. You know, and that happens a lot of movies, but you shouldn't go back and forth and back and forth. You know, that, that doesn't, that's almost too much in one movie. So, the reason why I'm talking about this movie, <clears throat> excuse me, for so long 
is because it really has a lot in it. And I think there's a lot to unfold. I think there's a lot to enjoy. I think there's a lot to unpack and talk about if you want to have a real conversation about it. And movies like that are really good. They don't need to go unnoticed. I understand this is set in a different country with some different language that may be hard to understand, but music is a universal language. It's totally worth your watch. I hope you seek it out. I hope you give it a try. I'm going to give Wild Rose a B, and I really hope that people at least realize that this is out there. You know, everybody made such a big deal about the last country, movie, country music movie that we had, and I watched it, and I didn't really care for it, and... You know, sometimes you need something kind of under the radar like this to come along and surprise you. And the big blockbusters are kind of disappointing. And that's just kind of how it is for me when I watch these movies. Um, sometimes the blockbusters are amazing. Sometimes they're really disappointing. But these under the radar ones seem to, you know, at least earn our watch. You know, they need to be noticed. So I do hope you at least, you know, maybe look up the music. If nothing else... And maybe try and watch the movie if you can. But I really think the people who watch this movie, invest their time into it, will really enjoy it. Will really get a lot out of it. So I will give a B to Wild Rose. Thanks a lot, guys. My name is Danny. If you like this or any of my other videos, try and give some of them a watch. Like and subscribe to my channel if you would. Enjoy movies. Thanks.